Welcome to Transformative Principle, where you learn how to be a leader and not just a manager of a to-do list. I am your host, Jethro Jones. You can find me on Twitter at Jethro Jones. Your to-do list is a hungry monster that is never satisfied. For the last year and a half, I've helped principals get awards, get promoted, and find the time to do the work that really matters. I recently opened a new mastermind slot. Schedule a call with me and let's overcome the stressed and isolated principal position together. Go to the show notes for this episode at transformativeprincipal.org and click schedule a call with Jethro. Hi, I'm Chris Nessie from the House of EdTech podcast, a proud member of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual host. And make sure to check out all the other great podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. And now, the learning begins in three, two, one. Welcome to Transformative Principle. This is a special episode with Nancy Conrad. And before we get into the conversation, I want to take a moment and just talk about some of what we're going to talk about. This is an awesome program that Nancy does called the Conrad Challenge. And it is named after her late husband, who was a astronaut and entrepreneur and he was very passionate about education and doing cool things and providing for the future and designing things for the future so i hope that as you listen to this that you will take a step back and find a few kids in your school that you as the leader in your school can sponsor to do the conrad challenge now what's so cool about it is that The Conrad Challenge is not about you and you doing more work. It's about the students learning without limitations. So go to conradchallenge.org, check out what's there, get a few students and get them involved around an idea and then be supportive of them. Now, it doesn't take a ton of work on your part. Well, anything worthwhile does. So it's going to take some work, but really it's about the kids. So You being a support person and a helper to them will be very beneficial. And if you can't do it, send this podcast to one of your teachers or someone else who could take that time and do that work with those students. The reason why I'm so passionate about this is, as I say, we're doing some of this in my school right now. And I really believe that the future of real education is not going to be students sitting in front of a computer, you know, getting all the information they possibly can. It is really, if we want to have education that really makes an impact on kids' lives and on the world, it's going to be this kind of thing, relevant real world activities where they are forced by virtue of what they're learning to be able to do something that matters and learn something in the process of that. So that's my own personal bias and belief. That's what I think is happening. So take a minute, listen to this and start a team with your students. And, you know, the first step is free. You get that no box toolbox, you get an opportunity to do something cool. And then if it doesn't work out and it fizzles, then you've at least taken the first step and you can see what that feels like. And as I'm doing this in my school right now, I'm I'm just loving it and it is so much fun working with the kids and very exciting. So anyway, enough from me. Enjoy this interview with Nancy Conrad and go to conradchallenge.org and get yourself and some students registered for this challenge. It is very awesome. Welcome to Transformative Principle. I am so excited for this special interview with Nancy Conrad. I had Nancy on the Transformative Leadership Summit this summer, and I thought I've got to do another interview with her and talk more about what she's doing with Conrad Challenge and the Conrad Foundation. So, Nancy, welcome to Transformative Principle. Thank you, Jethro. So after talking with you, well, let me step back a couple steps. We at my school this year are doing a new thing called Synergy, which is a time during the day where it's about two hours, two times per week, where students have the opportunity to 
learn without limitation. So they are engaging in projects where they're coming up with the idea, they're getting a teacher to sponsor them, and then they spend that time managing their own project. It is very intentionally not an additional prep for teachers to teach students, but for students to solve real problems and make their world better. And when I was introducing this topic, I actually shared one of the examples from the Conrad Challenge, which was the students who made the suit to help astronauts' muscles not atrophy. And I shared that with students, and we just barely started, but there is a lot of great ideas happening in our school. And I just want to say thank you for your work so that we could have examples to go off of for what we're doing in our school this year. So thank you. Well, thank you, Jethro. Your learn without limitation just gave me goosebumps. That's exactly what we're about. <laughs> That's exactly what we're about. Yeah. So we're going to get into the Conrad Challenge here in just a moment. But you you have this idea that there is no box. And can you talk a little bit about what no box thinking entails and how we can start solving problems with that approach? Sure. So... You know, fundamentally, we've been taught over the years, there's inside the box thinking and outside the box thinking. And we subscribe to a theory that there simply is no box. And your learn without limitation is is really the subtext to that. So we invite students to create commercially viable products uh, that can solve global and local challenges. So this is sort of Social impact meets education meets students who understand that there are no limitations and that all things are possible. So outside the box doesn't necessarily mean all things are possible. It means you've leapt out of a, of a square. Learning without limitation is spot on to, to no box thinking. And what we've done is we've created a uh, organic framework, really, that help students and teachers to navigate how to learn without limitation. So it was inspired by the Google Design Sprint, and we've converted it really into a, a classroom environment where learning can happen, products can be made, problems can be solved, and there just simply is no box. There's no idea that can't work in it somehow. Yeah. And, you know, that idea is so powerful, but it's so opposite of what we typically do in education, where we are taught to be quiet and listen and and regurgitate information. And I imagine that there are challenges for people who have not experienced doing this kind of thinking before and not, you know, stepped out of the traditional education structure, how do you help people move out of that box type thinking to a no box thinking perspective? But yeah, that's precisely why we created the no box toolbox. <laughs> that's <Great>. the <laughs> aid you need and it's on our website. And it's there really to walk through that framework of, um, of, of just Learning without limitation. I, I call what we do now the testocracy. You know, we created it. We all know what the story is. And I don't like to admire problems, but, you know, we're in a knowledge-based economy. And, and taking risk is part and parcel to the way the world works today. I mean, Moore's Law is out the door. We're going way faster than Moore's Law. So right. how are we going to sustain our workforce? If all we have is students who don't know how to think and don't know how to learn and simply know how to wait for instructions and behave, it's not going to work. So I think it's so important in today's world that we adapt our system to what we are currently doing in workforce and, and in our knowledge-based economy. Otherwise, we're going to go downhill real fast, and I don't like gloom and doom, so and I don't like to admire problems, so I like to just go fix them. And this is our way of, <laughs> of contributing yeah. what we can to that scenario. Yeah, I love that approach that it's easy to find problems, and it's it's much more challenging and engaging to actually go out and solve those problems. You know, one of the things that led to our development of our of our synergy at our school is that 
teachers had this compulsion that they needed to, you know, if you were a math teacher or an English teacher, you felt that if you did anything outside of the the box or the curriculum or whatever, that you had to tie it back to your content area somehow. And so that was all well and good. And, you know, as a math teacher, that's what you want them to do is to actually teach math. But at the same time, there are a lot of things that we could have done differently to to help students learn different things and not be you know kept in our little box of our content area and so what we're really trying to do is make it so that that we're able to you know it doesn't matter what your content area is you have something to add to help coach and mentor students and that's really the kind of relationship that we're that we're trying to develop how does that kind of a relationship improve the educational outcomes or feelings or whatever with students when they're working with teachers as mentors or as closer to peers rather than as, you know, people who are saying this is what you have to know. So in our competition, Jethro, you you need to know stuff. I mean, what it really does is give you an opportunity to take everything you've learned, math and physics and science and biology and uh, multiple pieces, and I'll, and I'll explain that a little bit in a second. And and you stretch all those things, and you create something out of nothing, and you own it. And the teacher works with you as a guide. There's such a great relationship between our teachers and our students. Uh, and by the way, we also give a teacher of the year award. That's my award. I think I've shared with you. I am a teacher. And uh, I haven't been in the classroom in a long time, but teachers always teach. And so this is really my passion and and what I've dedicated my life to. And and so our kids work in categories. So there are lots of problems. I call them challenges because problems are negative to me. Challenges can be solved. And the challenges that we focus on are in categories so that there are some parameters for you to look at. So we work in health and nutrition, energy and environment, cyber technology and security, aerospace and aviation. And this year we have a couple of special categories. One is transforming education through technology, and that's sponsored by Smart Technologies. It's an interactive whiteboard, and I just went bananas when I saw that because I went, that is the perfect place for the no-box toolbox to come alive. And then our other special category, we work with the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World. And what we are working on with them is actually systems and technologies to prevent youth from even starting smoking and behavioral changes and such, as well as helping farmers in areas, for example, Africa, Malawi, particularly, uh, where tobacco is no longer going to be a crop and it's a very vicious crop. So how do you fix your soil and what can you do as a farmer in Africa to stay economically, I guess, economically okay and and still convert your crop to another crop. So those are the categories we work in. If you really look at it, it's the entire universe. And, And it's not that there's nothing, you know, learning without limitation gives you some areas to work in where you take everything you know stretch it, go make something out of nothing. You own it. We don't own it. And you do whatever you want with it. And and the goal is not so much to take a product to market as it is to learn how to learn and to learn how to think. And the process with the teacher is such a high impact on both sides that it, it the relationship changes exponentially. And these kids, I have kids now that came into our competition in 2010. Uh, They're part of our our alumni group. And the teacher that brought them into this competition, they're still in touch with her. They're still uh, motivated by her. That's what happens when you have this kind of opportunity on both sides of the fence for the learner and the teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as a teacher, like I'm, I'm pretty tech savvy, but the categories that you just mentioned, I don't really know much about them. And so I feel like, you know, I, maybe I can't mentor or coach any kids in these areas because 
I just don't, you know, I don't have any expertise in those areas. What's your advice to someone who, who has that line of thinking like I do? Jethro, do you eat? Yes. Yes, okay, I eat. So I'm going to <laughs> my work for you. Do you turn on your lights? Yes, I do. Okay. Energy and environment. Um, do you have technology that you have um, an interest in preventing uh, someone from getting your data? Yes. Do you fly? Yes. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Now, wait, um, I won't ask you if you smoke or ever smoke, but, you know, transforming education through technology, I strongly suspect since we're using technology right now, that perhaps that might be a category for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so truly, like, I, I get that, and I could probably find something, but oftentimes that starting, taking that first step is what people find challenging, especially with you know, sponsoring some kids to, or supporting some kids to come up with something else. So, so that's, that's why you need the no box toolbox. And it's mm -hmm. the students that decide what their product is. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so take the pressure off of yourself because these students live in this world where all of those pieces are incredibly important to their life. And because it's student-led and, and the learner becomes the center of the credenza, they can decide which category they want to work in. And, and they can begin to decide and use the Notebox Toolbox as your uh, framework for the students to find a, a topic. I, I was in a, uh, an event with a bunch of teachers, and we were walking them through the Notebox Toolbox, and they were like, well, we don't know what to do. Uh, direct us. Tell us what to do. We're waiting for instructions. <laughs> Sound familiar? Um, sure does. <laughs> and as soon as they got out of the box and got into the no box toolbox, they understood how to do this kind of work. They focused, ended up focusing on leadership, how to teach leadership in the classroom. Hmm. Interesting. Now, that was teachers. What the students yeah. come up with is whatever they come up with. So let your, you know, I would just say let the students guide the uh, deployment, if you will, and use the Notebox Toolbox as your framework to build upon, and you'll be stunned at what comes out. I mean, we've had kids, everything from water purification systems to gloves to stop hand tremors, to technologies to scan suitcases instead of going through TSA with those machines that they have. Technology, you know, there's a billion birds killed every year. They fly into buildings. And some students created a technology so that the birds would not fly into buildings. Holy smoly. I mean, it goes all over yeah. the place. So. I got to get your, your mind into a no box thinking skill set. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. And I'm aware of that. And, and so I, I think that as, as we're talking to people who are listening to this and saying everybody needs to, you know, take a chance and try something, I taking that first step, you know, just go and grab, you know, three to five students and, yeah. and start, right? Exactly. And the toolbox will help you to guide you. You know, <laughs> if risk-taking and, and creativity are central to entrepreneurship and to innovation. Mm -hmm. And we need these things in our, in our uh, world right now. And so if we can't take that risk and we can't open up that creative channel, uh, we're going to get pretty stuck pretty fast. I mean, you look at, you know, when we went to the moon almost 50 years ago, it was all about taking a risk. These were calculated risks because this could spoil your whole day if it didn't work, <laughs> right? But, but it was yeah. calculated risk that had a massive impact. So, you know, the kids that were in school then, when Kennedy announced the moonshot, were 16 years old. And when we went to the moon 10 years later, those were kids working at Mission Control. So it's pretty interesting to think about what the next 10 years might produce with AI and VR and all the things that are going on in technology today, especially even 
how we're uh, working in health and, you know, electronic medical records and all the things that are happening in, in discovery today. What a great gift to give yourself and your students to become part of an innovation generation. Yeah. And that idea, I hadn't thought of it that way of being part of an innovation generation that really does have some, some power to it. That's something where I feel like I am constantly pushing the limits of what we can do in, in education. And yet I've never really thought of it as being innovation. I just think of that as me, you know, just trying to find the best thing to do for my kids each day, right. you know? Yeah. Well, and this is part of it. I mean, your learn without limitation tagline is just phenomenal because that's exactly at the very core of what we're trying to do here with the Conrad Challenge. I mean, it, it's to inspire young people and inspire teachers. So, you know, look at the potential of that and how that can, can design the future. Because everything starts with education. We know that. That's why we're teachers. That's right. And, you know, and it, education doesn't only mean, you know, sitting in the classroom, having a teacher tell you what to do. And no. that's, that's one thing that, that I'm trying so hard to wrap my head around is how do we support the idea of learning happening no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. But if you're working on solving a problem, there's so much that you have to learn to actually solve that problem, it's probably way more than we could ever expect a student to learn in a course about that specific topic. Would that be an accurate way to phrase that? Um, I th yeah, I think that, you know, um, how do I explain this? So most of our education looks down a straw. You're looking down a straw at math or science or biology or geology or whatever it might be. And that was fine back in the days when we had conveyor belts and we were trying to train screw screwers. We now have an internet. People are connected globally. Young people don't see any borders. Um, in fact, our kids work together across countries, across states, across School districts, they, they form teams together. And so when you look up and you go to a place where you understand that the world has globalized and that you can make a contribution, the whole equation changes. And, and P.S., the workforce is going to be demanding. Well, they already are demanding. Uh, they're demanding that these young people know how to do things. I, I giggle. Uh, I, I think I shared this with you, Jess, bro. I, I don't have a PhD, but I do have a GSD. I get stuff done. <laughs> and so all of these kids get GSDs, all the kids that participate with us, and the teachers as well. I mean, it's it's a way for a teacher to really enjoy and, and be part of a whole next generation of kids who who – know how to learn without limitation, as you have said. Yeah. So for people to participate, they need to go to conradchallenge.org. Right. They don't have to have everything figured out yet. They just choose a category they're oh, interested yeah. in, and then they they start, right? So talk a little bit about that process. Yes. Well, so the process is they answer some questions. They form their team. They decide what topic area they want to work in. It's not in stone. I think they can... I'm not sure, but we have kids that have been in the competition before and they can come back in. It's not like a one and off, you know, one and done. They can come back in. So it's a very simple level of entry. And then I think it's uh, November is the first cutoff, the first deadline. I just got that and I don't know what I did with it. I'm not very good at that. That's okay. I actually have that right here in front of me. So the team registration closes October 19th. And so between right. now and October 19th, you just want to go and register and you don't have to have everything figured yeah. out yet. You, you register. Absolutely not. No. You could say, I want to work in health and my product has to do with uh, headaches. Yeah. You know, and you do, you answer some questions about it. What's the need? You know, there's, it's all outlined on our website. Mm -hmm. So you do have to think a little bit, but you don't have to have it 
ready for patent, shall we say. Right, because then the next step is to get the no-box toolbox, and then you go through that process and, and create your prototype and all that, and then the investor pitch, that's due on November 2nd. And so what does that investor pitch look like? Ah, well, it, pretend you are at a VC. You're at Sequoia. You're at Kleiner Perkins. What does an investor pitch look like? So we, we help you to understand what that looks like. And you have to have a business plan, a market study, and a visual representation of your product idea. And then the, the students that get invited to our Innovation Summit, which takes place at Kennedy Space Center, uh, the end of April, the 24th to the 27th. Those students pitch in real time to live judges. Before that, everything's done on the internet. The, there's a uh, evaluation by subject matter experts who can help guide your product idea, as well as judges who will evaluate the product idea. And it's done against a rubric and there's a score. And then if you get through there and you go into the next funnel where you get invited to the uh, Kennedy Space Center Innovation Summit. That's the real, that's yeah. the real meal deal, you know. That's where these students come together from all over the world, and they pitch. And I mean, I've explained it as Shark Tank meets the Academy Awards. <laughs> the excitement of it is that we're not we're not dedicated to kids going to market and and commercializing their idea. We are dedicated to this opening of their minds to understand that there isn't a limit on what they can do. They can be part of designing the future. They can be part of the innovation generation. And so the kids come together. It's award ceremonies. You get to hang out at Kennedy Space Center, which is like super, super cool. And the kids then become part of our alumni, the ones that who have participated with us. Most of them get into incredibly good schools. And in, I had someone from one of the universities contact me. He said he had never seen presentations for college admission, like the ones that came out of our students. And my belief is that it's because they know how to present. They, are, they become very comfortable in their own skin. They get leadership skills. They get teamwork. They get collaboration skills. They understand how to create and to communicate. And those are skills that will last them their entire lives. So we're very proud of our kids. They all end up doing great work. And, um, you know, <laughs> P.S., it's really fun. <laughs> this is where learning is fun. Well, and, and that's a part that, you know, sometimes honestly gets overlooked, Nancy, that having fun yeah. is really important. And if you're not having fun, then, you know, it's really challenging to get up and do the work every single day. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. And I mean, this makes the process fun. I mean, my late husband is Pete Conrad. And I think I've shared with you as a kid that got thrown out of school, uh, didn't know how to read or spell. Of course, dyslexia just wasn't invented. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. what he had. And this guy was fun. And, and if this weren't fun, man, he would be so angry with me. Right. But it is fun. And I think learning is fun. And if we can do uh, something to encourage young people to learn how to love to learn, wow. And teachers to love to learn how to teach. What a concept, huh? Yeah, just that's fantastic. So well, it's it, it is. And yeah. it's, it, it's really what I think most of us went into education for is to enjoy doing it and do things that are fun and exciting right. and engaging. And it, it's too easy to, you know, focus on tests and curriculum and not the kids uh, sitting in front of you. And that's, that's what I love about this challenge is that, you know, you don't have to tell me that kids are going to learn through this process because the, the amount they're going to learn is Oh, just okay. unbelievable. So that is really exciting. So Nancy, conradchallenge.org is where people go to sign up. My last question is, what is one thing that a principal can do this week to be a transformative leader like you? Whoa, passion. Let's never forget the passion. If we came to education with that passion and to ignite kids into the love of learning, and teachers to being juiced and jazzed about 
what we get to do every day in the classroom and how we are so blessed to impact young lives and to to bring to them an opportunity, as you have said, Jethro, I love this, learn without limitation. That's where we need to go. And every principal that's in every school all over the world has the opportunity to invite young people to participate in designing the future. Yeah, boy, that is the truth. Well, Nancy, thank you so much for being part of the Transformative Principal Podcast. And I appreciate all that you're doing to help innovation and education move forward. So thank you. Thank you, Jethro. And I can't wait to see what your kids come up with. Keep me posted. Okay, I sure will. Thank you.